Hell, I'm going to be, bud. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Pulley Moore, Firehouse Vigilance. It is weekly scrap number 198. My guest tonight, 19 years career in the fire service, 10 plus years in the volunteer service, six years as a volunteer chief, city of Brighton, Arkansas, and he's made a whole lot of changes lately in his life. He is the epitome of challenge accepted. He is not afraid to challenge himself. First in conference, man, what a difference that has been in different locations scattered throughout Arkansas. Uh, he is passionate about understanding the why of the fire service. He is passionate about instructing. And most of all, he is passionate about sharing his knowledge. He's a firefighter's firefighter. It is my honor to have you on as the guest of Weekly Scrap number 198. Welcome, my brother, my friend, Ryan McCormick. Man, thanks, Corley. It's, it's an honor, sir. It's uh, it's been it's been uh, an amazing opportunity, and uh, I'm just excited to 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 talk and just spend a couple a little bit of time with you and the rest of the folks out here. So, I uh, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, and and I don't know what to say. I may I may goof up. If I goof up, I apologize. Uh, I just I sometimes my mind gets faster than what I want to say, and uh, so if I start blurting out words that don't make sense, Google it. I guess I don't know. I'm just gonna start throwing words out there. I love it. I love it. That's what we're here for. Rabbit holes and Googled words. Uh, is there anything I missed in the intro? Anything you want to add? Man, now, other than uh, you, you kind of hit the deal about going um, uh, the last 15 months of my life changing yes. up. And, and so I guess we're going to we'll get into that just a little bit. But no, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty close. Pretty amazing that you could that you had it. So, yeah, no, it's, you're, you're right on spot. Nice. I love it. Um, there we go. Kyle Romagus is here. He was asking, is there problems? Yes, there was problems. Yep. Ryan put up with it. We were we were having trouble connecting to Facebook, making it happen. Not, not the internet, not the normal stuff. This was just Facebook saying, uh, not tonight, but we said uh, challenge accepted again. And so we're here. Um, so let me do on track, quick announcements. If you are not a member of the Vigilantes, ask yourself why. Look in the mirror and ask yourself why. It is the coolest thing to be a part of. Five bucks a month, 60 bucks a year. You can join the latest thing we're doing, and I'm super pumped about this. I'm not going to lie. It's called um, the V90, and this is the booklet that is all about it. It's called Conquer Yourself. It is about body, mind, and soul, and goals. Uh, long story short, I, I put it out there to do this with the vigilantes because I've tried to do it twice myself. It's something I invented, so it's it's weird that I tried to do it and failed. And I thought maybe five or six or seven vigilantes would join in and want to do it. There are 71 vigilantes that are going to do the v90 we're starting on july 1 the v90 commitment so i'm pretty nice. pumped nice. want to be a part of it go to firehousevigilance.com that's good uh, that's it's going to be cool man i'm so excited because i've never finished the, i made it to 63 days and fell apart because i went to fdic and had excuses in place you know the reasons for not completing it yep. and so this time i'm going to be accountable to all 71 of them and it's going to be awesome uh sponsors for the show tonight, number 198. I can't believe we're at 198. It blows my mind. 198. But the OG sponsor of the scrap, Key Hose. Check them out on Facebook. The Hose Experts. Affordable Drill Towers. Home of the Affordable Drill Tower. And the Affordable Standpipe Prop. Firefighter owned and operated. Pump and roll using the Affordable Standpipe Prop. The Affordable Standpipe Prop fits through most classroom doorways for standpipe theory. And then you can roll it out into the parking lot and pump it. Comes with six standpipe valves that can be upgraded to PRVs or customized to what you have in your jurisdiction. Call Steve, 844-55-TOWER, or drop an email to info at affordabledrilltowers.com. And of course, Flame Decon. I love them. Show them love. Clean yourself properly. Get the cancer off your body. Get some Flame Decon and take care of your health. With all that being said, the final sponsor we're going to talk a little bit about tonight, which is First In Fire Conference, and uh, I'm excited about it. And Ryan is representing for for good reason. So there you go. Housekeeping out of the way. I'm going to catch you up, Ryan, on the on the uh, chat. Andrew McGinn said, "Let's go with four. Yep, four O's." Uh, Sam, letting everybody know what's going on. James Mitchellisco said, "Damn, I was getting worried that I had my days mixed up." Three Beagle firefighter checking into the command post from Indy. Thank you, James, for being here. Jeff Eckert said, the man. I know he's talking about you. Uh, uh, every yeah. Sam checked with everybody, said volume is good. So here we go. Can't wait to hear what Ryan is going to talk about. One of the best 
in the ground, in the around. And that comes from John Shackelford. Uh-oh. So here we go. Yeah. Already logging in, getting it going, comments coming in. So my brother, I wanted to lead it off with where, because you're a passionate guy. I think that's a safe thing to assume. Yes? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yep. Love it. Love the job. Love the, uh, just what, whatever. Has, my wife says I'm too much into it. And I'm like, yep, you're right. I uh, just love the job. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. And if, if, if uh, I know, I know that's, I know that's not for everybody. Uh, but man, I just, I just love, uh, I love the job. I love working. I love, I, I guess it's kind of interesting is, is no matter what, I just love to help. That's the biggest thing is, is making somebody, when I say help, not those that we serve, but those that we work with and also train. Love it. I love that. And where, if you could put it into words, and I, I know it's putting you on the spot a little bit because we didn't talk about any of our, normally <laughs> we do a little bit of pregame and talk about questions we're going to lead off with and stuff. Today, we just dealt with technical issues. So Ryan's coming in blind. But where does your passion come from? I, you know, I don't, I'm not really sure. Uh well, yeah, I can. I'll tell you. Yeah, this is kind of unique. Um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of different. It's different. I'm a preacher's kid, and nice. uh, so, um, and I'm not, I'm not afraid to say that. Uh, I, and so, being a preacher's kid, you got to see folks, my parents helping others, and um, and I guess that's just one direction that I came from of of seeing my family helping others in a ministry perspective, and and then uh, my ever since I was a young kid, I, I just remember I, I lived in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for years. Uh, that's kind of where I started the, the man, I wanted to be a firefighter. I wanted to be a part of that fire service and, uh, seeing the fire trucks go up and down the road all the time. I'm like, man, when I get old enough, I want, I want to do something like that. So I knew at an early age, I wanted to help others in that, in this type of a career profession. So that's kind of where that came from. If that makes any sense. No, it does. It does uh, more than, you know, I'm a preacher's kid. That's the oh, heck yeah. yeah, 100%. We got two preacher's kids sitting here. Talk dad's a Baptist preacher. Been so my entire life. Nice. So, um, no, I absolutely wanted to ask that. Uh, I want to move on to building the first in conference. This is what yeah. most people, I would, most people that I know that know you from, I know, you know, a lot more people outside of first in conference, but most people that know of you know of you because of the first in conference. What was the germ of that? Uh, where did, where did that come from? How did that come about? Yeah. So I, I guess I can say, I guess to kind of start the story, uh, 10 or so years ago, I, uh, I started, uh, for the city of Bryant, that's where I was a training captain. And I started just having uh, some, just making out some, re- re- reaching out to some folks and saying, hey, will you come to Arkansas and just kind of spend a weekend with us and teaching uh, not only not only my, my fire department where I was a training division at, but also the surrounding communities in, uh, in the county. And so as, as it started building and, and just kind of going on and on, I realized, man, Arkansas is just missing some stuff, you know? Um, not that Arkansas doesn't do things great, which they do, but we just don't have, I, I thought at the moment at the time, I wanted to bring in those power, those powerhouse guys and, and gals and make, to make a difference instead of having to travel outside of Arkansas, let's bring it to Arkansas. Right. And, and so give, I mean, people are going to travel no matter what to go to, to hear these, to hear these folks that, uh, speak and talk and train and, and listen to, but I wanted to bring it to my back door. And, um, and so in order and started doing that, I just, I started reaching out and networking with some folks. And as I, I taught with, I, I still do, I teach with a task force one. Um, and so that kind of started my, uh, my journey is started bringing some folks, uh, folks to Arkansas. And then from that point forward, it just kind of grew. Um, nice. and then I just, uh, I basically just kind of went, uh, I did a sidebar about five, four years ago. And, um, I just wanted to bring it on my own. Instead of working it with my department, I want to do my own. And when I say my own, I wanted to bring my friends when I'm talking about you and, and when I, those are those that I believe in to help make it to make a change, uh, not just for Arkansas, but the passion for the for the, the service um, and, and bring it right here to, to, to Arkansas. And um, man, it's, it's been a, it's been a game changer, not trying to compete with anybody, uh, not trying to compete with different conferences. Uh, by, by no means. In fact, there's much more better conferences out there than mine. And, I, and I'll say that right now. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, my goal is to, to, to at least you know, bring in, um, bring folks to Arkansas that, that people in Arkansas don't get an opportunity to go see and, and make that journey outside of the state. So I, that's kind of, if that makes any sense, Corey, I just kind of build, build, a, build, a, build a, a product that folks want to continue to be a part of. 100% it makes sense because I've been a part of it since the beginning. 
Yeah, uh, I believe so. You didn't have one before. I, I, I'm pretty sure. No, your wanna, first one. I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but it's yeah. been it's been the best conference in Arkansas, and I can say that because I'm a sister state. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of states out there. Like there's not a lot going on in in some states. There's some states that are hotbeds. Don't get me yeah. wrong. And yes. and it it's almost crazy. Like it pops up, like passion pops up in a in an area, and it explodes and and it grows. Yeah. Uh, like South Texas has been over the last five years, just a oh, hotbed. Yeah. And then, but there's also places where, like in Arkansas, like you said, there's nothing. Right. And that's not a knock or anything because there's great firefighters, great culture, everything. But you were one of the first to say, we're going to do this here. Yes. No. And that, that, and it's been uh, consistently. And the next one's coming up here shortly. Next one's coming up. Yeah. You know, I had some opportunities. I, I you know, took a leap of faith, but just, just put it out with the first one. I'm like, okay, we're going to go small. Well, I can't do something small. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't understand that. I try to, I try to go small. Then I talk to you or I, I try to go small and I talk to Chief Davis, Mo Davis, or I try to go small and talk to somebody else or like, Hey, what about this? What about this? I'm like, well, okay. So we'll just, we'll just grow it and and then hope that I can afford it, you know? So, uh, so that, that's the biggest thing. And, and uh, you know, it's been it's just been a blessing since since day one. You know, you you're coming in and and you've been you've been a part of it from day one. And and man, we've we've been from from you know we went we started in Little Rock area, Bryant, Little Rock area. Right. We went up to Northwest Arkansas, yes, uh, Silent Springs, and and then we also did one in uh, 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 Rogers, Arkansas, right there, yeah, the and, University and so, town. Um, yeah. So yeah, so man, we 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 go back and forth, Northwest Arkansas, Central Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas, Central Arkansas. And uh, it's just been a, uh, um, uh, it's been, it's really cool to see how many folks want to come and be a part of something like that. No, it is. It, it really is cool to see the passion grow. Now, I will tell everybody if you have questions for Ryan or me or Kyle about anything specific, especially the topics we're talking about, like putting together a conference or where your passion comes from and, and any of the topics we're going to get into, please, please, please post them in the chat. The audience drives the discussion, and Kyle Romagus is sitting here waiting for your questions. Yep. And and he is the curator. He's the one who determines if your question is worthy. Yeah. Well, Kyle, so, Kyle can ask a question, or he's but Kyle's a part of it too. He, oh, he Kyle, came up to Arkansas and was a part of it. I mean, it was it was pretty cool. And uh, he and Howard, uh, they both came up, and it was man, they they made a made a pretty cool deal. So he I'll had, tell you. Yeah, go. Kyle is oh. a part of everything. Kyle, Kyle is one of the driving forces uh, of the scrap. Kyle is the, the first in. Kyle is, man, the whiteboard episodes. Yeah, everything, hundred percent. Right. Yeah, uh, I can't say it's, enough. We, we just can't say no, Corley. I mean, that's the problem. I think with we just can't say no. You know, we can't say no to to, and that's a bad thing. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's also a good thing. But it's it's horrible sometimes because how many hours of a day that we always all have in the fire service? You know, we want to. We got families. We have you know kids. We have school we have work whatever we gotta do but man I, I i wish there was more time in a day that we could give back and and be able to just sit back around a, a back of a, of a fire truck and 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 talk to folks or make a phone call or have have someone like this that people can reach out and say hey got questions i don't know everything but if i don't know what i know who call somebody right else <laughs> and 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 then and then it's kind of you know that does not that only doesn't make me better but it makes us all better and and if you don't if you if you sit back you learn so much by just listening so and I, and I do want to touch on the network because that's a huge thing. It really, is. really. Is. But uh, but I want to say I got to read some questions or not questions, uh, comments coming at you because one of them came from Sean Duffy. Sean Duffy said, and that's my man. Build your culture. He's oh, not. He's not lying. Twelve days of live fire is Ryan's idea of small. <laughs> Uh, do I tell you that story or not? I don't know. I might get. I trouble. think I've heard versions of it. Have you? Well, uh, if, if I'll tell you about go, it, if you want tell me. It. It was, I, it I think hard. everybody wants to hear it. Oh God! So, so I had a great idea, which is you know sometimes great ideas turn into bad ideas, right? And um, so, city of Little Rock, there's a, there's a sister right beside us from where I was at Bryant, and um, they asked. Well, I say long story short, we. City of Little Rock and a bunch of other departments wanted to get everybody on staff through a one day training. And it was live fires. It was VES, forcible entry, uh, uh, ladders, which is which cutting off of aerials and search. And so we started to do this. I, I started planning out for a six day event. Well, it wasn't working out from a perspective for the biggest city in Arkansas and, and which was Little Rock. And they were like, man, uh, the assistant chief goes, Hey, can we do this 12 days? 
I'm like, wow, I don't know. Can we? And so I was like, well, let me, let me make sure these instructors that we bring in are, are willing, you know, cause that's, right. a, that's a big deal. And uh, which at the time, if I ever ask you for a 12 day deal, <laughs> I expect, I expect you to tell me absolutely not. And, and, and what are you thinking? Cause or Duffy or call Duffy and tell him to call me or somebody. Cause it was, it was, it was, and it was awesome, but it was just, we just did so much, you know what I mean? Right. Plus, plus again, Arkansas heat. If you've ever been to Arkansas, the heat changes and, and it's just, it's bad. And so, um, so we had to do with that. And we, I thought we had it well planned for the, the heat to be away. Well, they had a, we had a heat rush. So all that being said, we put 1200 firefighters through a one day course, 12 days. Wow. If that makes any sense. And, um, we had, I think, uh, we scheduled, uh, I think there was 12, 12 or 15 departments that were, that participated in the 12 days of training. And probably by, probably by, by, by day seven, we were done. So, uh, it was, it was just, it was like, we're just, just going through the motions. And, uh, but it was, man, everybody got, I, we still, I still hear good things about it. Um, <laughs> and, and, I, and I say good things about it. I, I, I sometimes hear the bad things about it too. And they're like, what, what would you, don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that. So uh, if you ever have an idea of 12 days of training, and let's just, let's break bread and worry about that some other day. Right on brother. Right on. Uh, 12 days, Arkansas heat. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and smooth bore cartel Kyle said that's 100 per day for all of you who aren't math magicians. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So <laughs> that was a lot of folks. It was it was new people every day. It wasn't the same folks. It was new. It was new staff every day that came to those twelve shit to those twelve days. So, so here, right. So we we impacted a lot of firefighters uh, um, during that during that time. And and you know uh, I I couldn't ask for a better team of uh, instructors that came down and 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 helpers and uh, people that were like you know what we see the passion we see the vision. And we want we want to be more we want to be a part of something like that, and I think that's what I think that's and honestly I'm I'm doing a, I'm changing I'm calling an audible here a little bit poorly is going different paths is right. like going to passion for a second you know that's contagious and and I think I think some people forget about that and that's one thing that's why I do it I think it honestly is is because I want I want what's best for for us I want what's best for for those that are that are serving I want I want what's best to bring in to bring in the best. Uh, and, and because because what happens is is those individuals that that we choose to serve they expect the best and if we don't provide that then we're not doing our job and and we're not doing we're not giving it all and I understand that's that maybe be cliche or whatever but that's my that's my standard that I have that I expect from my guys um, and from my my team and, and from my department that I run I don't I don't I don't want and I don't want to say that rude or disrespectfully is. I don't think we just we should just, should expect that to have anybody um, with with that. I don't I don't have I think they need to be. Um, uh, I guess I guess what I'm saying is we should expect the best of the best. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, absolutely, and, absolutely and, and, and makes if, sense. If you don't, if we can't get that, then we have a problem in the fire service, and and which we, which we do because we allow redundancy we were allowed we were at minimum standards ready i went all over the place a second ago <laughs> minimum standards okay i apologize here we go is minimum standards is one step above failure but why do we accept that i, I don't understand why we accept minimum standards and 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 because if if uh, it's just that one step above failure and and my deal is is i want what's best for for i want what's best for my neighbors i want what's best for my family i want what's best and, and I, not for just my family, but for those that we serve together, my team, right. those that we ride together with, the dudes that come off. Uh, I expect that, and I think they deserve it too. And I went all over there, man. I'm sorry. I went, I, I, I took. I went down a rabbit hole. No, I got to write it down. 1919 timestamp. 100 percent worth timestamping. My notes. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. What? All right. Um, I have a question. Come. The first question coming at you from the audience. Are you ready for it? Uh, I don't know. Go ahead. You're not. Uh, believe me, because this uh, one's uh, it's almost a trap question. Uh, I don't like I don't like when people ask me this type of questions. As a host, I should I should not ask you this type of question. But should it you comes, just text it to me? <laughs> no, it, it comes at you from Jeffrey Eckert. Oh. 
And you got to keep in mind, Sean Duffy is in here. Kevin Pfluger is in the, in the chat. Uh, My boys. Shackleford is in the chat. Romagus is in the chat. There are a lot of people in the chat. I'm, I'm leaving people out. Yeah. His, his question coming at you is, who are your favorite hands-on instructors? <laughs> uh, you can't so you can't ask that question. Come he on. Did. I know. No, no, you can't. You can't ask that question because they're all different and they all have their their best. Uh, they're all they're all good in their in their own ways, and that's that's stupid to say that. But you can't ask that question. Who was that, Jeff? That was Jeff. That was one hundred percent. Jeff, go go turn plugs. Do do something. Uh, no, you know. So I think. I, you know, you you gotta you gotta admit, you know, go to FDIC. We've been to FDIC. You know, we were there this a couple weeks ago. I think every instructor, no matter what, and is everybody has something to bring, and 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 that you can learn from any every one of them. Now, some have different passions, some have different techniques, some have different uh, ways of talking and, and expressing their their love for the job. Um, but I mean, uh, I, I you know, I think. You can learn. You can learn from everybody, not just one right, one good guy. There's no one. I think. See, Jeff, you got me all, all confused. I can't say no. So yeah, they're all they're all they're all good. Now now Jeff, I don't know about Jeff. He's still he's still working, trying to get he's trying to get up there still. I gotta. Oh, sorry, I was acknowledging some of the comments in there. <laughs> no. Uh, Jeff actually 100% said it. He said, uh, where did he, where, where was it? Did it go away already? Ha ha. He said, ha ha ha. Have to put the pressure on. There you yeah. go. I had yeah. to read it right. <sighs> I need to get a Philly accent on. I didn't really yeah, do, you do. I, I didn't do it justice. That's no, not at all. Not at all. That's a, you gotta, you gotta learn vocabulary when you, when you figure it before you start talking to him because they have a different mindset talking. Right on. Uh, all right. Next question coming at you from Sean Seymour. And this one is a, uh, more of a, this isn't as much of a trap question. This is more of a normal question. What's your opinion on the use of smoothbore versus fog nozzles? Just your take. It's an old debate. And I think it's, I don't think it's near the topic it used to be, but in some areas it is. So let's hear what your take. Man, I, I, that's, Kyle's going to be on here. So Kyle's going to probably start chiming in too, but that's fine. Honestly, I, there's applications for both. Um, you know, I really do. I think there's, I feel there's applications for both. If you don't train on it, you don't use it, then don't try it. Don't, don't try to be a hero with them. Um, I think, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a believer. I've used both. Uh, I've, I've had no problem with both. Does the fire go out? Depending on what nozzle you have, fire goes out. It's, it's just how is the application. And so, uh, I personally like smoothboard. If that's, if that's the, if you're asking me that question, I feel the smoothbore is is the right uh, the right application and the right tool to use. But uh, but again though, is if you if you don't have that fog nozzles, rock on. If you you still can you can still use it. It still works. It was not we're not re reinventing the. I don't think that 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 question, Corley. Um, you've hit it almost on every almost on many of your uh, of your scraps and. Um, and you know you can go about how much water comes out of out of a smoothbore, how much water comes out of your fog nozzle, whatever. I, I guess my statement is, or my way of thinking is, what's best for your team and your application? If you're comfortable with a smoothbore to fight a fire, then I would expect you to use a smoothbore. If you're comfortable with a fog nozzle to fight a fire, then I expect you to be comfortable and make that your primary. And then if not. Focus on focus on one and be good at it. Right. And instead of trying to focus on so many other things in the fire service and try to be an expert in this and an expert in this and expert in that, if if we're talking with the nozzle side of it, if that's what you have, use it and then and then become proficient and become uh, proficient and become a be, master your craft. That's mm. that's the Boom. thing. Master, master your craft. And it doesn't. I don't care what what nozzle you have. I don't care. As long as you master that craft, then that make then you can you can teach, train, and and uh, and out and apply use that the, uh, the application process to fighting your fires. And so I, I'm I'm a I don't like going down that hole of which one's best because they're both have they both have the same thing. But I'll change it. I'll ask you master your craft or which one you do the best with. That's your job. That's not that's not my job. That's your job. Your job is is to make sure that you're proficient. And not only you're proficient, 
your team's proficient, your pump operator's proficient, um, and, and your your nozzle guy's proficient. You know, be be proficient with it, and and then and then move forward. I love it. I love your answer, brother. I love your answer, and I love your passion. Uh, I absolutely will say for compartment firefighting. In my opinion, there is a best, right? And I and I and I stand behind everything that Ryan just said. For compartment firefighting, vent limited firefighting, there is a best. And if you don't have that on your truck, be so good at what you do with what is on your truck, and then be passionate about making that change and educating everybody around you. But be so good at what you have. You have because to. that I, that is what matters. Yeah, I think you have to. I think we forget. A lot in the fire service. Now, now, let me back up. Is there are let's talk about career life staffing, big staffing, volunteer world, all that kind of stuff. You, right have, to, you have to be you have to be you have to be concerned about that because of of your your limitations. And but with your limitations, that doesn't mean you can't. I, I guess I was going. What I was trying to say is this: is you know, master your craft, master what you can what you can offer. Right. Sometimes you have to master a couple other things too. You know, you, you you may ride on a on a on a, a ladder truck with a, with a pump on it, right? Right. Uh, Trenchins, those trenchins, right? And yeah, so, ladders with a blader, one hundred percent. Yeah. So you're you're not only you don't only do truck work, you do engine work, and you so so or in rescue work, you do all three. But master master something on each of those on each of those techniques, right? And then and then have somebody else master, but become become proficient in those. But the 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 master side of it, I just I think everybody wants to get their hands in the cookie yard. And always be be good at everything. We can't do that. I don't. I don't think we. I want to do that. I think we 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 set our standards high for ourselves. I know I do. Uh, I know you do. Corley have have a standard that sets. You know, my wife tells me, Ryan, you have a standard that other folks can't can't meet. And I, I understand that. That's me. And 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 that's what. We, but but my question is, why can't you? Why why can't you meet our expectations? My standards. And and I, and I think that goes back to to going back to the passion, right? But going back to again, change change that change that subject again is going back to mastering those crafts. Is if you're on an engine, master engine works. If you're on truck company, master your trucks. If you're on a rescue, master rescue. Um, you know, but master those those master your 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 love for the, your love. I guess that's the question is because I might love extrication and you might not like it. So, but I, but I might learn something from that person who doesn't like it. About something else that he does. Does that make? Does that, I hope that's. I hope that's making sense. No, no, no. Hundred percent. From from the first answer on Fog Roos's booth all the way through, man. Hundred percent. One hundred. I love the answer. All mm-hmm. right. Switching right. gears on you, Lighten, Lighten, man. Hawk Yang, Hawk said. Question for anyone who wants to answer: Would you start down? the path of creating your own training company to teach students with like-minded instructors or start up a mini conference, bringing in outsiders. Mm. That, and so I throw it to you first, but also anybody in the uh, audience who wants to answer, who has experience. Hey, say, that qu- say that question one more time. I think I caught it. Say it one more time. No, I'm saying, would you ra- would you start your own training company and bring in like-minded instructors so that you could train, you know, with the like-minded instructors and teach students or start up a mini conference and then bring in people from all over the place to teach. Okay. Which may, obviously you've done both. So yeah. that's the, that's the, it's a great question for you. That, that is, I think, I think it's, I think it's a, um, I think there's a little bit of, you can meet in the middle. Um, and I, cause, cause you have, I think in your area where you're from, if you're going to be getting a, if you're going to start a conference or start a training uh, scenario, weekend training deal or something like that, uh, I'll give you a great example if I can if I can change this for a second. Next week, Pulaski County is uh, is where Little Rock, the uh, city of Little Rock, is is in Pulaski County. The Volunteer Service is doing a weekend free training with instructors that are from Pulaski County Fire Departments, and so they're bringing that passion in what they believe in to a free training for all the firefighters in that county. So I say that is I, I believe I believe there's a, there's a there's a happy medium there. Um, you know, your expert training witnesses or expert witnesses, stuff like that, that 60 mile radius is coming out of, of areas of, if you bring somebody further than 60 miles, they become somewhat of an expert deal because they're not around your area or not around your, your metro area. And so I, me personally, I've done both. I've had people within my area, um, that are departments close by that I work with be a part of the training conferences. And then I have folks outside our state or, or other side of the state come in 
and and be a part of those conferences. And I think I think people want to see from outside your area. Mm-hmm. I think that's different. I, you're, I think the ability to become uh, how you sell it. Does that make sense? Yeah, how yeah. you sell it is how folks are going to re, is going to obtain it. And so bringing somebody from within your area and trying to sell something is much harder than bringing somebody outside and bringing that same information, but from outside and selling it. People will grasp on it. I don't get it, but but a, but we do. Folks do. No, it's, it's worked. And uh, I'll read what the comment said. Uh, hey, Sean Seymour said, thank you. Great response on the fog nozzle question. Fog versus smooth. Uh, Sean Duffy said, why not do both? It makes for a well-rounded training experience, which is a great answer. Don't get me wrong. He right. said, let's also, Sean Duffy also chiming in said, let's also not forget about the power of a fool's chapter. Don't have one, start your own. And they are, they are powerful, man. Oh yeah. So fool's chapter, they're coming so the Arkansas has two fools chapters. So one Northwest Arkansas, one Central Arkansas for this conference uh, in September at first in the fools are doing a training, a, 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 lot, a hot class. And so they're teaming up together, coming to Little Rock and they're putting on a, a, a mental toughness eight hour class. And it's all hands on. And so I, there again, I wanted to bring that mixture of folks from outside of Arkansas and 10 folks inside Arkansas to, to bring, to give that passion back to show basically to showcase, Hey, we do have some good guys here around here that can that are that are that are that are knowledgeable and that can be the same has the same passion the same direction that that others have but right we on. have one here in Arkansas so why not utilize that and so my that's why I I said you know what let's try it out and man they did it in they did it in Rogers uh, last year um, for for a hands on class and I just I I liked I liked what they brought and man um, if you're gonna take that class you're gonna you better you better bring your Wheaties, eat your Wheaties, because you're going to be worn out. They're going to wear you out. Uh, and, and it's awesome. It's awesome. It's, it's just awesome what they have to bring. Love it. Love it. Uh, I don't, Now, here's the deal, brother. I, I, I sometimes don't know if it's an inside joke, outside joke, if it's even directed at the guest. But people ask me questions. And this one is, how did you feel when you got your engine stolen with a laugh uh, out loud? I don't know if that's a real question or not. but It is. Okay. No, it, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, well, let's see. Um, who asked that? Uh, I just hold on. I'll tell never you. Never mind. No, never mind. Philly, Philly Tin Helmet Training yeah. LLC, which is Jeff Eckert. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff and Gabe. So you're ready for story time. So, story time. Story time. So during those 12 days of training, right? We talked about a little bit ago. Um, I'm a volunteer chief, or having a volunteer chief. The guys just wanted to get away and go to the firehouse, do some laundry, and just sit and just chill, and I then clean their gear and all that kind of stuff. So. Man, I went and bought some pizzas. I came over to the firehouse, and it was about 9 o'clock. And uh, I said, man, I'm, I'm heading to the house. You guys stay as long as you want. Um, uh, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyway. But it is what it is. So I told the guys, I said, hey, man, if we have a structure fire, because we've been burning several times that week, and it's just just happened to be burning and working fires. So we have a structure fire. Y'all come, but just wait for a driver. That's all I ask. Just wait for a driver. I mean, we had guys from Houston. We had guys from Baltimore. We had guys from Indiana. We had guys from Philly. I mean, why? who would not want a group of those kind of firefighters showing up at your house on fire? Who would not? So I I got home. I mean, I, I lived three miles from the fire station, right? As soon as I got home, hey, the alert went off for a structure fire to a neighboring apartment. Well, doggone it. I turn around, and I pull up to the fire station, John Shackelford standing outside with his gear. And, <laughs> and I said, where's everybody at? And they're like, they're gone. I'm like, they're gone. Yeah, they're gone. So I'm looking in the, I'm looking in the parking lot. Who, who could be there uh, from, from my department, volunteer department driving. Cause all I asked the man stay there for somebody to drive. Right. Get there. I don't care. They, they took it and went. They Google, they they did the, the, the <laughs> navigation thing and they took it and went. Well, here's the funny part about this. They're going down the road about a quarter mile away from the fire station, and one of our volunteers met them, and they're they're standing whether it was a Jeff, Chris, or or Gabe or somebody, and having their head out the window saying, We don't know where we're going. And so they're like, so he turns around and they follow him. Follow like, me. Yeah, follow me. 
Well, I'm telling, I'm asking, I'm asking John, I'm like, hey man, did they really just take the fire truck? Yeah, they really did. I'm like, hey, what do you say? What do you, what do you do? And right. so, so I'm like, okay, rock on. Now, other people would probably frown upon that, but it's okay. Uh, so we, we get there and sure enough, things on fire. And so I go up to command. I said, look, you might see some different gear and different people that you haven't seen. Don't worry. Just tell us what you want and we'll take care of it. So they're going to take care fastest, of business. Yeah. That was the fastest fire I've been to in a couple of weeks, man. They were, but they were, it was all smiles. And man, and, they, and that was, but again, it was that, you know, that 12 day thing we we're talking about that just re-energized. But Love that's it. the story that a lot of folks will, will, will want to say at, the, at their funeral. John was one of them because you got to say that at my funeral. You got to come and talk about someone stealing the fire truck. So <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's there true. you go. Yeah. Uh, I have a few uh, comments to read here. One comes from Michael Ramirez on the earlier topic of uh, uh, starting a conference or training. He said, personally, I've gotten way more influence from outsiders coming to teach in our area. You get a different perspective for sure. So I wanted to get that perspective in there just to read that comment. Um, Sean Dovey said, absolutely love it, brother. The thing I wish more would understand is you don't need permission. If you see a need for something, create it. There's so much knowledge out there to give and receive. And I love that message 100% because that's what you did with First In. And and I love that message. Uh, the last one I want to read here is from Kyle Romagus, Smoothable Cartel. And I love this one because it's it it speaks to my soul. Three reasons you should keep a fog nozzle on your rig. Number one, water fights because you don't want to kill anyone. Yep. Number two, a hazmat decon because you don't want to kill anyone. Number three, car fires. And he's quoting Dave McGrail. So he gave credit yep. to where credit is due. Yep. I don't I don't disagree with any of those three. I don't at all. So yep. Love it. I absolutely love it. Okay. Uh so many questions, brother. Are you ready? Oh yeah, go with it. Hope I hope we're doing okay. Oh, you're killing it. Ryan Johnson says, any ideas on how to sell others in our departments that complain about how we do things now, but won't invest their own money or time to go to many conferences in our area? They all say the right things, but their actions don't match when they don't sign up. So that's a, that's a, that's a different kind of question. I don't know if I've ever had that one before. Uh, What do you think? Uh, You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think my opinion is I I would love to see everybody go to conferences. I think I I really do. I think uh, whether it's FDIC, whether it's CFT with, with, with uh, uh, Florida, wherever, wherever they're at, I don't care. I, I would love to be able to, to overwhelm each conference. I, I think that's, I think that's where we need to get to in the fire services, overwhelm all these conferences. And, and um, you know, I, I, I think that's important. I think the other thing is, I think the answer to the question is this, is you're not going to get buy-in from everybody on conferences. You're, we, we know that, you know that just like training, you're not going to get everybody involved with training who or have the love of passion for that type of training. You're just not. And, and, and honestly, that's a sad statement. Right. Um, that's a very sad thing because because once you get, I guess once you get outside your your, I say rookie class, rookie year, whatever, um, that that's just the tip of the t- iceberg. You have so much more. There's so much more out there to learn from. And my 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 question in return is why not? And right. I hate asking. I hate asking the why. I hate asking the why question because as Corley, I was talking. I was thinking about that today uh, at work. Is the why is. is why do I ask? Why do we ask? Why not? And and why? Or, or the question is, is why? Or why do we ask? Why? And 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 that's because we do we do ask that is yes. Is, and 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 sometimes we come back with some really good reasoning behind it. But I guess I want to throw it back at them. And when somebody says why, ask that question of why. I want to ask them: Is is tell me why it's not better? Why it's better not to go? What? Why is it better not to go to these things than it is to go, than to stay here? And so my, that's, that's the question I ask them is if you're willing to go, if you're willing to benefit your department and yourself and go to these conferences, not everybody's going to drink that cooling. We understand right. we're not, we're, we're in, and the, the bad part is you're excited about something and you try to take it back to the firehouse. These guys are like, I don't want to hear it. That's okay. Right. Uh, don't be discouraged about that because you know why they don't get it. And, and the reason they don't get it is because they don't want to get it. And 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 I don't and that, and, I'll, and I'll say that to anybody. I've talked about that all day, every day. If you're not bettering yourself, 
don't be mad about the guys that are trying to better themselves and coming back to try to help you. Right. Because you know what? That they're they want to see you because they expect you to help them if something happens. If you, if they can't trust you and they don't see you training and becoming up and be and basically updating your skills, and but they are and they have there's there's a different application or a different way of 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 I'm just going to use this example a different way of pulling hose right a different right. way a different way of pumping or a different way of cutting a hole. If you're not willing to to at least listen and observe that, then why are you still here? Right. Why are you still here part of the fire service? You may not like my answer. I don't care. I really don't. Because these guys, these guys are doing bet what's best for them, and you're not willing to listen to them, at least give them a little bit of benefit and maybe listen. They may they might bring something back to you. Because hey, what happens if we do have a fire tonight and you do go down and that technique would have saved somebody's life, but you're not willing to learn it. Right. Right. And so, I mean, I'm not asking, I don't, I don't think it's, it's right to ask somebody to learn everything you go, every time you go to a conference, learn something uh, and, and bring back and, and learn a, an abundance amount of things. But I do think it's important to at least listen to them and and listen to what they have off to off brought back to offer. And, and maybe, maybe that's a kitchen table conversation. Maybe that's a back tailboard conversation. Maybe that's driving down the fire, down the road, going to eat get, or to get food from a restaurant or, or a uh, grocery store. And you tell them about what you've learned or what you've heard. I mean, I don't think, I don't think we should not uh, at least, at least allow that to bring it, be a part of our conversations, our daily conversations. Oh, I love it. I love it. I really, really do, man. Great answer, brother. And a great sermon. I mean, I don't want to say, I know you're a creature's kid, so I got to say sermon. Uh, 100% <laughs> that the passion came through. I want to ask this question because it comes from Jared Terry on the topic of uh, uh, especially hosting conferences. He said, how do you talk your department leadership into hosting conferences and hands-on training? Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's hard. Um, I'm not going to, I won't lie to you. It is, uh, it, it takes, it takes, um, it's a risk. Does that make sense? Um, uh, it, it's a, it's a very big risk. Um, you gotta, if you have a chief that believes in you and you have a chief that's training, that believes in training, you have no problem. I had a chief that saw what we saw what we could what we could bring to the table. Does that make sense? And yeah. he, saw, he saw what we could do, and he valued that. And I that was a big to me that was a big deal. And he, you know, that cautiously optimistic. Does that make sense? Like being cautiously optimistic and kind of stuff. Um, but he was cautiously, but he was open to to change. He was open to do. To bring in because he saw he saw the benefit right. um you know also that networking it makes sense that talk about the networking for a second man you know how easy is it to network right we're doing it right now and and that was a phone call Corley, several years ago of just saying hey you got a minute let me share what i have and seeing if you if you're interested to help me out and those networks go a long way with bringing in the uh i guess getting the approval and blessings from your chiefs. Right on. Um, and I think that's what, I think the biggest thing is you got to keep your chiefs actively involved with it um, and let them have buy-in too. Uh, don't go so big. You, know, you remember, I, I, to me, don't I, look, this is me telling you that 12 days of training, right? <laughs> go, go big or go home. Right. Don't right. Do that. Don't do that. Start, start small, do a day or two day deal or, or a Friday night, Saturday kind of deal. Start small and, and see the buy-in that you get from not only your department, but also from your surrounding areas and who you're coming, who's coming to the classes and then grow off of that. that that's kind of what I did. Just kind of grew off of what, what I was able to bring and then realized, Hey, we can do better. And, and, and we can, we can continue to do better. Cause again, it is, you're taking a risk for your time, your money, your energy, your passion, and for your department, because they're allowing you to do this it is to bring in, these guys, but the 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 end game. If you got, don't ever forget the end game. The end game, in my opinion, is if you can influence one change, one change during your whole deal, then it's a home run. I don't care yeah. what I don't care what else happened. If you can if you can do one change of somebody, and they can take that back because that one change is contagious. And when I say contagious, that's one thing is how you can sell it. 
being contagious. If, if somebody takes that one thing that they learned, I don't care if it's a statement, I don't care if it's a technique, I don't care if it's a relationship they built, that one thing, if you can take that back, you've done what you've, you've, you've exceeded your expectation. Boom. Dude, right there. <laughs> Rural Fire Tactics LLC said it best. Timestamp that. 100%, <laughs> man. 100%. What a great, another great rant slash sermon, whatever what you want to put on it. Sorry, no. man. I, I apologize. No, it was it was it was great. And I wanted to say this. I wanted to say this to the person that asked the question, which I've already deleted the question. So please bear with me. Is if uh bottom line is this if you if you and I think this will bear out if you actually did a study of all the conferences that have been successful, it comes down to doers. Yeah. Uh doers, man. I'm I'm having a conversation right now, one on one with all of you here as, as the audience, with a doer, because he said there's a need here in Northwest Arkansas. If you if you go to the the Panhandle of Florida, Kurt Isaacson is a doer. He put on yeah. conferences there. He's a doer. Uh, Yowler and and Carolina Fire Days, the Brothers in Battle up in the Pacific Northwest, Dagum Fire Conference and and Fluger and all his and Hollick and everybody down there. Uh, Eddie Steele, Frontier Fools, and uh, the uh, gone to Texas Fire Forum. Yeah. You, you just you identify doers. Doers get stuff done. Talkers sit around and say, why won't my chief support this? Man, don't wait for Bugles to tell you to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Go out and and do it. Be a doer. Be a doer. Uh, and yeah, sorry. I, that was my own private rant. Uh, don't be afraid, though. I, I think, can I, Corey, can I say something real quick? Go, always, always. Man, don't be afraid. I think, I think people sometimes are afraid to, to take that step. And and uh, to, to take that, that, that step to... To make it to, I guess, do something. You know, do it. they're afraid of what what people are going to think, what people are going to say, or what people are going to. Um, you know, it's it. You're you're stepping into a. You're if you decide to go make me a doer, you're stepping in a in a different path. Be, and and be prepared because they're going to start they're going to start talking about you. They're going to start they're going to start shooting at you. There's going to be all sorts of things that's going to start happening because. You're doing it, they're not. Right on. And if and then re, and then it's honestly, it's jealousy. I, it's hundred percent, in my opinion, it's jealousy because they can't do it. That's my biggest thing is if they wanted to do it, then they should have done it a long time ago. They're no. seeing you do it, and they're they're realizing, man, he he that person is doing something better for the the, the service, better for our department, better for our area, or better for whatever. But if my my question is why can't you be a part of it? Hmm. If you want to be a part of something, don't talk bad about it. Get on get on the, be a part of becoming better. Oh, and, 100%. And, and it's not about I mean uh, you know Kirk guys said, man he has an awesome event he has an awesome training thing going on down down in Florida. I mean thousands of people he's influenced in there in, in years that he's done it and and uh, that's that's amazing. I mean that's just amazing. But you know how many folks. Look at what we do, you and I, and and others that do do these conferences. Look at it and be like, "Why are you doing it? Right? Why? Why are you putting? Why are you so passionate about this? Why are you so passionate about that?" But they don't get it. That's the problem. Is not they don't not that they don't get it. They don't want it. Right. And, and that I think that's the biggest thing is they don't want it. And in order to and because they don't want it, they want to make everybody else look at you and say. You're not your 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 passion's not appropriate in this magnitude. Who cares? Right on. I don't care. Who cares about them? You know, I have a big saying: line up. If you're a hater, line up because there's more numbers behind them. And so, <laughs> just keep on lining up. I don't I have no problem with that. And and because there's more people in front of them than they are behind them. Love it. I love it. I understand. Uh, my my list was by no means comprehensive. Sean Duffy is in here. He started Great Lakes Hot, which yeah. has been two years in a row of amazing. Uh, so many doers out there. So even to try and list them, I was like, don't try and list them, Corley. But I did, and then I left people out. Uh, I left so many out, so please don't feel like that. There are so many doers out there making amazing things happen, uh, just like Ryan in Arkansas, just like Duffy in Michigan, and yeah. the boys in Texas, the boys in Florida, Pacific Northwest to the Northeast. Be a doer. And, yeah. and, and what, like Ryan said, 100%, as soon as you try to step outside that box and be a doer, the crabs will be there trying to drag you back down in that bucket. A hundred percent. Yep. 
Yeah, man, it would be amazing. I think I just just sit here listening to all, and all those names you're putting out there that do those conferences. Would that not be cool of putting putting all those names in one hat and put one conference on together? The mega oh, conference. Oh, <laughs> would that not just be? Would that just not be amazing? Oh you know, yeah, those guys that want the, each 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 representative from all those conferences and do one big conference somewhere. Man, that would be amazing. No, a hundred percent, dude. The 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 internet and the world that the the scrap has been able to be a part of in the fire yeah. service, it's just crazy. I yeah, yeah. I, I look forward to the next five years because of of the shrinking of the the of the fire service because yes. of the the walls are coming down, the standards are. are going up, man. It's it's awesome. That's right. Uh, and you know the, the funny part about you talking about walls, I just I interrupted you, Corey. I'm sorry. Go go go. Uh, the the funny part of that is walls are coming down. All right. I'm a chief, so I can say it, okay? I'm just going to say it, is there are some chiefs that it's time to step away because they're allowing – they have those walls built up. They're not allowing what were the new to come in. And and I'm not being – I don't – I believe in it. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but, man, either get on the game or get out of the way because, because that five years is going to make a big change. No, it's going to be an amazing change. Yeah. Like the, the evolution – that that we are seeing uh i love brian brush one of my favorite people on this yeah. planet anybody yep. who knows me knows i worship the man uh 100 he said it he said it to me i don't know I've, I've quoted it so many times on the scrap he said corley when you get outside the walls of your fire service you realize that the fire service has no walls so you're right and it blew my mind because and and the internet has definitely facilitated that because there was a time when there there was definitely silos and walls yeah. but man they're gone now yes and and they're they're they are under attack, and it's a beautiful time to be a firefighter. It's a beautiful oh, time man. to be alive. You're absolutely right, and and, and it's 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 a, it's amazing. It's a, it's just that passion. You can see that passion growing, and 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 seeing like you said, those walls breaking down. And I want to be a part of that. That's that's what I want to be a part of, and mm. and that's why the conference is to me is is dear to me. I guess uh, obviously I uh, it's 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 us, but. Uh, any conference. I mean, I think I think any conference you, you go support helps helps break those walls down even more, and because it could it comes everybody comes back. Love it, man. All right, David Byerly, I love your question, brother. But it is uh, very very close to one of the five questions for firefighters. So I'm not asking you right now. It will be part of the five questions for firefighters when you ask about attributes and what's the most important one. Um, I like this because it's light staffing. Right in your wheelhouse, Ryan. Yeah. Rural Fire Tactics wants to know, how about prioritizing tasks when on a low-staffed engine company? VES versus fire attack. What's your thoughts? So is that up part of one of those five questions you're going to ask me here in a little while? Well, I, I, it's very – I mean, I'm going to ask you what you prefer. What, like yeah. if, if Magic Wand, you get to pick what you're going to be on. But yeah. this is a different one. It's like how do you prioritize? Man, oh, so, yeah, so uh, – Light staffing. That's been my world for, for 18 years. And then I took a then I took a, a change in direction to a, a a large career department for 12, 13 months, um, and then changed back to light staffing. Um, so uh that will I guess we'll talk about that in a minute, um I, Corley. But to answer the question, I said uh is is this yes, we gotta put water on it somehow, light staffing, uh, but also VES simultaneously and i think here's the deal is we, we don't be tethered don't the driver doesn't be tethered does not need to be tethered to the pump when you're dealing with light staffing it's all you have is two or three on the on a scene you gotta start making you gotta start doing different tasks immediately that whether it's hitting if it's hitting it from a window and ves and somehow we gotta we gotta put water on the fire that's that's the biggest thing you gotta put water on the fire but there you also have to be able to go do that ves um and so can you do can you do multiple tasks? Yeah, we can do multiple tasks, and and sometimes you just have to. And it's and as long as you're, man, I I, I know I'm all over the place on that one, Corey. I, I'm sorry. I, my my biggest thing is basically is we're here for them, right? And we also got to put water on the fire, so you got to take a calculated risk. If you can make that, if you can make that grab, then I expect you to go make that grab first, um, and then somebody else. Uh, whether it's the driver uh, can can charge a line and start putting water on uh, the fire from the outside. Right on. That would be, that would be that's that would be me. I've been there like that. I've done that. 
that's a decision that you have to make at the time, at the moment. And, um, and that's just the, you know, is it, is it wrong? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't have an answer to that question though, Corley. And what it just been, it, it, situational awareness is going to tell you whether or not is VES appropriate or is fire attack appropriate. Well, long, long story short, man, uh, know what you're going to know what you're, Know what you're going to do before you show up and then let the conditions dictate your adaptation to that 100%. I think, and I preach, this is what I preach, which is if 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 the best thing you can do for any victim in any situation is put water on the fire, yes. period, especially the modern fire ground. Yes. But, and then you deviate from that depending on conditions as you show up. And 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 there is no doubt, especially, and I don't deal with light staffing. I'm blessed. I got five-man engine companies that are reduced, reduced, to four man for minimum. So I am blessed. Yeah. And and so uh I'm, I'm very clear when I say that. So when I when I when I preach this stuff, it's it's know what you have, know understand what your default is so that you can call an audible. Because if you don't have a default, you can't call an audible. Yeah. So we were just talking about that today. We were, we were at, at, the, at work today, we're stretching lines today. We're just doing some stretching line inside. It was hundred degrees outside. So we're stretching some lines in the house. And one of the things, one of the things that kind of go with this is this is know where you're going and how you're going to get there. Right. And, and so when I say know where you're going, and how you're going to get there is you may have to change your front door is always not going to be the right door. Um, you know, your, 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 your plan of attack may have to be a side door, back door window or something like that. So always be ready for, especially with light staffing, man, I, that's been my, that's been my career for the most part is light staffing three man engine company. Um, you know, seven, nine guys on a house fire until mutual aid gets there in a city volunteer world, three or four, two or three, four guys there for quite some time, right? Your rural areas. Um, and so you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta different, differentiate a couple things. What's your best bang for what you're going to do? What's right. going to make the mess? What's going to make the best outcome for immediate, your, your immediate application, whether it's water on the fire or VS in that window real quick, right. make sure nobody's in there. And that's a, that's a decision you got to make as you're, as you're, you got to be fluent. In that what moment, in that moment, be. on that scene. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, and, go ahead. No, 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 no. I, but we're saying the same. I'm yeah. walking on you and as you're, as you're, as you're delivering. So I'm sorry. No, you're good. That, you're good. We're, that, we're, that's, that's it on that one. Oh, we're on the same, we're on the same page on that, man. We yeah. absolutely, like yeah. we are going to be task power, or uh, manpower limited, task saturated, and we have to figure out what is going to be in a time compressed, high consequence environment. Figure out what is the best application of that manpower in a task saturated environment. Plain and simple. Well, and I think simple. something else that we forget about too in the in the light staffing is, is is your task. I can give you more than one task. Why why am I why am I why am I uh, limited to one thing? Right in 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 a light staffing scenario. Why there's you have to make sure those tasks are in a prior, you're prioritizing those tasks, but I can sure. give you a couple of tasks to get to make sure you accomplish at the right moments and, like and until, more, until more personnel and manpower shows up. I love it, man. All right. Uh, Mitchell Lisko, James Mitchell Lisko checking in from Indy. Ryan, what are your thoughts on acquired structures for live fire versus fixed facility? Live fire, not other essential skills, search, vent, hose, advancement, et cetera. Man, if you can get an acquired structure, get it. Um, I think that's that's so realistic, um, uh, and it's it's kind of you're not muscle memory of a training building. Um, you're going into into something new. Uh, I was very blessed. I can say that I had a fire chief that that was okay to allow me to uh, acquire tr acquire structures and burning them. Nice. And I think that was probably, in my opinion, some of the best training that you can give. A, your department and, and your your guys because it's realistic. Not that live fire isn't realistic in a burn building. Not saying it's because it is because we have a burn building too. But a resident, a residential house that you can get and acquire, man, if you can go through all the proper paperwork and all that kind of stuff to take care of it, do it. It's worth that risk and that time. And and but but make sure you have all your your boxes checked too in your area to make sure you're. Uh, have your right resources, have your safety, have your water, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to just say just go John, John Joho and go fight, go burn a house down. 
use that house for a, a, a tremendous amount of time and learn from it. Right on. And, and yeah, I can't add to anything to that. That was a beautiful answer, brother. Thank you. Uh, John Shackelford wants to know with all you do, how do you keep from burning out? Oh man. Uh, that's a great question. I, I, I don't know. I think I don't have an answer to that. I really don't. Um, I just, I just get up and, and believe that, that there's a reason that God got me up and, and that there's a reason that my, my, my steps are, are moving forward and not backwards. Nice. Um, I give, I, I give everything I can. Sometimes I give too much and I, and I forget my priorities. Um, and, and I think that's, I'm guilty of it. I, I don't, I put the fire service first sometimes. And I think that's right. And I realize that's not right. Um, uh, because I have family. I got, I got boys, a family and, and, and honestly, preacher's kid, I believe in God. You know, I, 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 I believe it, that this should be, honestly, it should be, uh, Christ family career. That's how it should be. And, and there's a lot of times that I get those mixed up and, and that's on me. That's totally on me. But to answer, to, to answer that question is, is I get up because I know there's an opportunity to make, make an influence, make a difference in somebody's life today. And, and something that I can just give back every time. And if I can do that, my family supports me. Um, and that, that's, that's the biggest thing. And if you don't have the support, uh, at, at home and they don't, you know, and, but they believe in you, that's the biggest thing is they believe in you. And so I just, I just keep moving forward. And, and I got, you know, like, like John said, I got so much things that I just, I just do and that I probably should step back and, and, and concentrate on a few things instead of a lot of things, but man, I, I just, I, I love the fire service. I love, right. I love, I, I'm one person, just like, you know, we're talking about your, your, those folks, those, those folks who influence others. I'm one person. If I can influence somebody in one positive way and, and, and something that I can offer or share or, or, or even be a part of to help change a life, then that's what I want to be a part of. Um, and, 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 but I want to learn. I think I, I can do that with learning as well. Um, you can help somebody and still learn. And, and no matter what you do. Love it. I love it, man. There you go. You ask great questions on the scrap. You get great answers because the scrap only has the best guests, man. Uh, two questions coming. Uh, and these are uh, kind of in the same vein. Okay. I'm going to read both of them and then let you let you kind of feel the uh, theme of them. All but right. Sean Seymour and Kenny Sanderson. So Sean Seymour went first. He said, what's your opinion on when one person in leadership criticizes and thinks poorly when you choose to do extra without being asked, like waxing floors, waxing trucks, buffing diamond plate. How do you change that mindset or even audience opinion? All right. That's the first question. The second one is since it comes from Kenny Sanderson, he said, since taking over EMS in our department from the top down fire training doesn't seem like a priority being a low grade firefighter. How can I light that spark to encourage more fire training. So basically both of them are the question of this is the culture of where I'm at. How do I change it? Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's a good question. There, there's so many answers to that, Corley. Honestly, I'm with you. I, they are so you can write a book and have a different chapter, different, every, every sentence and every paragraph is different. Right. Um, what I, 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 I tell folks something like this, and I've, I've told folks is I don't have to have somebody's permission to go out and do something. If I'm at the fire, if I'm at the fire station and I want to buff a, buff a, buff of tires, or if I want to go throw ladders, or if I want to go pull some line, or if I want to go, um, put my gear on and tie myself, why do I have to ask somebody for permission to do that? If oh. They don't want to be part of that. I don't have to. And what I found out is this is, and this for me, this is me. What I've seen in the past is. I've been, I've sat in that position before is, is these guys are sitting in the recliners in an air conditioning. And I was like, Hey, let's, let's do some training. Well, no, they're, they're watching wheel of fortune or whatever. Cool. No problem. I'm gonna go in the engine bay and I'll be on the engine bay doing some working on it. And then if they start hearing you, two things are going to happen. Either number one, they're going to get basically convicted because I got somebody out here doing a part of my team working and learning themselves. And they want to, they want to make sure that they don't, let you down and they want to be a part of that. Right. That's kind right. of what happens. Right. If you're a good solid dude or, or a part of the, if you're made out of the, the same old as the rest of us basically are, that's the direction that folks are going to trap towards. That's what you're hoping for. Right. 
Right. Now there are some that are going to be like, eh, I'm, I've been there, done that. I don't want to do that anymore. You know what? Let it go. They're not, just let it go. Don't, don't even dwell on that anymore. Don't waste any, any energy on them. Waste energy on those that are going to make a difference for you and, and somebody else. And so yeah. that, that's just my opinion. Why waste time on haters? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Why waste time on haters? We do that. We try to, we try oh. to do our service. We try to make haters our friends. No, get in line. I got, I got haters waiting. I'll have haters tonight waiting after this is over. Get in line. You know, <laughs> I, love, I, I, I love it. And I mean, that's okay. And I'm not, I'm not being, I'm not being uh, sarcastic or anything like that. No, but, I know you're not. I, dude, not. I love it. I laugh because I believe in what you said 100%. Sean yeah. Seymour, to your point on, uh, people that mock you because you buff the floors, you take pride in your station, you wax the trucks, you polish the diamond plate. Man, no one has to give you permission to be awesome. Keep being awesome. A hundred percent. They cannot take your, uh, I'll quote Mo Davis. They can't take your birthday. They can't. And they can't. No. So just do you. And if you want to change the culture, keep doing you, keep staying strong. And, and hopefully you'll promote within that organization and you'll make a difference to where that kind of stuff is, applauded as opposed to mocked and it takes time corley 100 percent. that's not an overnight and that's what no, that's a gotta, decade long investment yeah, that, yeah, you yeah. Understand that those those questions that said that have asked those questions you got to understand that doesn't happen overnight that yeah. that happens months weeks months years and and you have to be patient uh don't get you know you got to be patient in in that transition in time but if they're going to catch on or they're going to go one way or the other, something's going to happen. They're going to either catch on and want to be a part of something, or they're going to be left behind. Right on. Smoothbore Cartel, uh, Kyle said it. They can't eat you, and they can't take your birthday. Mo right. Davis. Mo Davis. Man, 100%. I love Chief Mo. Uh, I love it. Okay, Chief, uh, we do a lot of things, uh, but one of my favorites is talking about books and books that you've read that have impacted your life, that have made a difference for you, that you think – other firefighters should be reading. Yeah. So can I call an audible for a second? Always. All right. So I, I forgot to tell you when during our earlier beginning of the stages about uh, um, we we're having some technical issues. I want to give I want to give away a couple uh, conference passes during Sweet. the Sweet. So so I know we're coming. I know we're trying to land a plane here in a little while. No, 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 no. There's no there, there's no pressure. The only thing is is it's on you to deliver the. Uh, let me point at the camera. It's on you to deliver the free passes to whatever method you have for delivering them. So go ahead. So, so I, we got to come up with a solution. We got to come up with a plan. All right. How about I give 10 tonight, 10 away. Okay. So uh, how many, how many followers we got on right now? Uh, currently there are 63 viewers right. and right. 168 so comments. Yeah. They're, they're, right. Yeah. Go all ahead. Right. So we'll give 10 away somehow, some way here in a little while. And if you want to, I know don't be selfish for those that are watching right now, get on, get a hold of some of your folks and tell them to get on. They want okay. to have an opportunity to come to conferences in September. Uh, so we'll get a few minutes. So uh, I knew you, I knew you were going to ask that question. We talked about that question you sent me about the books. Right. Uh, so I, I got a couple books and I'm not, I'm not trying to name drop your book, but I like your, I like what you have. Um, oh, I like that. I, I, I'm I, actually biased and I, I approve yeah. of your message. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I really do. I, 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 I kind of, I kind of deviated off of reading for a while and that was my own journey um, and just, just didn't really get into reading for a little while. And, uh, your, your, your first, your, your, your first book is saying your book that you brought that I was, it was the first book I really picked back up and got into it for a little while. So I, I've been reading some different books, but I, I got a few that I, was okay. I, I want to throw out there. You know, again, we talked about being a preacher's kid. Number one, God calling. If you have that book, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, daily devotion deal. It shows you it's, it's like a two paragraph deal. It's called God calling. Um, and it, it's it's pretty cool. It kind of gives you a, a, a good start of the day. Um, and I'll be the first one to say it. Um, the next one, John Maxwell, the right to lead. Man, you want to be a leader? Start. I mean, if you know, not everybody's up to being a leader. Does that make sense? Right. No, but, no, I but, love anything Maxwell wrote. Yes, yes. Oh. And I, I've read several books of John Maxwell. I got another one, but the right to lead is 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 just something I put. I read multiple times. Um, you know, I told you, I told you I had that one, Corley. You know, that was one of your books I had that I was looking at. Um, but uh, the other one, John Maxwell, the five levels of leadership. 
that's a that's another really good one to talk about and learn. I, I I can read a ton of stuff and learn different things, but but my big, you know, you can go back from but leadership. I like leadership books. I love, I love leadership. leadership. I love leadership, which is why I love Maxwell. So yeah. you're in my wheelhouse of things I love right now. Good, good, good. You said the nine L's my book, and then you said a lot of Maxwell, which is and, and some biblical. And so right there, you're in my wheelhouse. Yep. There you go. So that's Max that's points. Big. Max points. There you go. Yay. <laughs> All right. How do you want to give away these passes? Do you have? Man, a... I don't know. Uh, I don't care. Let's see. Um, Sam Sam has a random name chooser, but I don't know how you want to do it. I, I, I you want to do some sort of quiz? Like, what's your thoughts? Because no, no, we, we didn't have we didn't have a chance to talk about this. We man. didn't get to plan this. Yeah. No, so we didn't have a plan. So, uh, mm, what can we do? Uh, who's the furthest one away? Furthest That's one away from where? Little Rock? From Arkansas. Who's listening the furthest one away from Arkansas? Far, farthest away from Arkansas. Uh, we'll see what people say. <laughs> Nowhere. Now we got Rocky Mountains, I know, because Preston Lyons is in here. But I, I just don't know where everybody else is from. Yeah, that's probably bad. Let's see. J oh, wait, JP Gardner said, I'm in Japan. So I think oh, he's, he's not there. either. No, he's not. He might be now. <laughs> he just, uh, he's, whether they're lying or telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. I can't say that. So how about um doggone it? I don't know, dude. Um, oh, he said Southwest Missouri. Okay, yeah. there you go. <laughs> so what about we do this? What about um oh let's do careers of service. Years in service? Yeah. Let's All do right. let's do some let's do a, a rookie. Lowest, lowest years in service? Yeah. All right, who has the least amount of time that is listening to the scrap right now? You least amount. Of, you got ten seconds. Least amount of time. We got Kenny Sanderson said three years so far. Three years. Scott Lawson said thirty nine. I don't know if you meant years, months, weeks, or what. Four years. We got two years from Jared Terry. There we go. Two years from Chris Dye. We we're gonna have to dig in. We're gonna have to oh, dig in. Three it. from three from Dane. One point five. Greg Van Ham. So there you go. Greg Van Ham so far is the winner at 1.5 years. All right, Greg gets one. Let's, let's, let's knock that one off. Greg, you got one, right? Right? I'll All write right. this down. Is that right? Yep. Greg Van Ham. Greg. 18 months. All right. So there's one. So we got nine left. You got nine more to go. What do All you right. want to give one away? Give one away. Longest, the longest tenured. Who is the longest, like the longest in the tooth? Who has the most time in the fire service that is listening at the moment? Post it. Let's see it. 35.5 from Dan Bender. Can anybody beat it? Nope. All right, do it. Dan. Dan, Dan Bender, lock it in. No one's All beating right. him. All right. Got it. There, there, there's two. Eight more to do. What are we doing? Military veterans. There you go. Military veterans. If you have served in the armed forces, is there? Should we do it by like time served or just? Uh, hey, you know what? Let's do four each branch. One, one for each branch. Yeah. All right. List your branches if you served and the time you've done it. Most time in service. That's what I'm just throwing it out there as the as the Got separator. It. If we need a tiebreaker. Yeah. 18 years in the Air Force from James Michalisco. 10-year Navy. 18 years Air Force. 10-year Navy. That's two. That's two. Okay. Oh, Cody Brooks comes in with 20 years Navy. Army, 22 years. All right. Name, 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 name them. Name them. I'm, 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 I'm trying. All right. Here we go. All right. Uh, I'm trying to get the right ones that won. Navy, 20 years, is Cody Brooks, uh, I believe. Patrick okay. Guyton said Cody Brooks, 20 years. Uh, man, fill me I, out I, if I'm wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. 18 years Air Force, James Mitchellisco. You got it? Yep. Army, 22 years, Eddie Robinson. Okay. I'm looking. Need one more. I'm looking. I'm looking I, I, at no Marines. No Marines have chimed in. What? We got Navy 10, Navy 20, Army 22. We got that, right? Yep. And the Air Force. What was the Air Force? 
We got Air Eddie, Thanks, and Cody. Yep. Michalisco, 18 years Air Force. Cody, 20 years Navy. And Army, Eddie. Okay. I have cool. a rookie from the Marines. Okay. Andrew Peters says, I have a rookie from the Marines. Okay. His name is Samuel Beddoes, but Andrew Peters claimed it for the Marines. All right. All right. There's there's six. So before we're done, we'll pause and we'll do four more at the end. How's that? No, I like it. Logan Hinkle has a great suggestion here. He says, who's willing to travel the farthest to come to the rock? There you go. Who's wants, who wants it? Who wants it? Who just wants a pass and they're willing to come to Arkansas to Little Rock? My next question is, I got a, these six that we just gave away. I want to see, are you, are you, are you going to come? Are you going to come up, to Little Rock? That's up to each of them. I can't yep. answer for them, but. No, nope. we gave it to you. And you can't give it away either. It's either, you, it's either one or done. All right. Okay, let's go. Are you ready? We have a thing we do. We got four to give away. I don't know how we're going to do it exactly, but if you're willing to come, if you're willing to come, just type a type, just type nine one one in the chat if you're willing to come. That'll work. I didn't mean to put you on spot. Really sorry. No, no, no. It's hard. Well, yeah. one thing is, I want the I want the people listening to the recording. You know, they don't give a crap about the recording because they can't yeah. win. Really? So I don't want to spend too much time no. on it. No, no, no. Keep running. Keep going. Hold on, here we go. We got nine one ones coming in. Keep sending the nine one ones. Yep. Sam, I hope Sam is is here. He's going to collect the nine one ones. Okay. Put, put the nine one ones in, and we will give away the 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 Four final one to Four the nine one ones. One more. Thanks, Sam. All right. All right. He's going to do it. He's going to do the random number. I'm okay. hoping. I'm hoping he's listening. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bottom line is this. We do a thing on here called the five questions for firefighters. That's what it started as. Yeah. Over time, it changed. It became the next five questions for firefighters. The questions are designed in theory to where there is no right or wrong answer. It's arguable. Mm -hmm. It's just your opinion. But me and the audience get to pass out the points. So my question for you, Ryan McCormick, is are you ready for the next five questions for firefighters? Let's go. Sam, are you golden? I'm checking with you. I'm just checking in. It says he's typing. I'm just no waiting problem. to see. There's been a lot of 911s in chat, so I'm just checking okay. to make sure he's on top of it. If not, we'll figure it out. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, all right. All right. Here we go. Uh, right. Numero uno. What single characteristic makes the difference between a run-of-the-mill firefighter and the top tier go-to badass firefighter? Willing to fail. Now, I don't know. I don't know if that's a a, a a good deal or a bad deal, but willing to fail. Um, I think. I think there. I think there's always success after failure. Um, and in order to to succeed and become to be part of that elite, um, you gotta you gotta fail. Um, and and saying failure isn't wrong. Being being not not. Not coming in first, but coming in last is not a bad thing. Um, and, and because why? Why? Number one, man, I, I'm I'm a high a high cotton man. I'm I'm standing on top of the line, and I got my gold trophy, right? My gold uniform. Being at the bottom, what happens? I gotta find. I gotta get to the top where they're at. That's giving me. That's giving me the the uh, the courage, the strength, and the desire to be to become number one again. To be be, be the number one person. Um, and so don't be a fail. Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, because man, I fail. I think we all have, um, in, in, in some part of, of, of life, career, fire department, whatever. But man, if you realize that you failed, make, make it, make it a determination to become, use that to become number one. Love it. Dude, uh, before you, like you were even hardly done answering and JP Gardner's at max points. And I could <laughs> not agree more. It was a great answer, man. Nice. The ability to fail, yep. the ability to learn, man, that's the whole point, man, w without a doubt. John Bishop said max points. Chris Dye said max. Awesome. Uh, I love it, man. If you got humility, you got my ear. I respect that 100 uh, from J.P. Yep. Gardner. There you go. So awesome. easy, easily crushed. No pressure. You easily crushed question number one. All hey. right. Number two, if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice as a rookie, what would it be? I just turned out to be a rookie 14 months ago. <laughs> so do I, should I tell that story? 
No, so let's hear it. Answer, let's hear it, man. Answer the question. No, no, you had like 17 years in the fire service, right? When you so decided... I had 18 years at a career department, and um, uh, I started all over with the uh, city of Little Rock as a rookie. Uh, fire academy, and then I got then I got uh, transferred from fire academy to the busiest engine company in the state, uh, nice. was Little Rock Fire Department. And man, and then I was there for a couple months and got transferred to a truck. Um, and so I was there. I, I was at Little Rock for. Uh, 14 months and then um, uh, got an opportunity to become a fire chief at a, at a suburban fire department outside Little Rock with the city of Alexander. So last 16, 15 months have been, a, I've gone to, I've started career captain down to rookie up to chief. But to answer the question as your rookie deal is um, know your place, know where you came from uh, and, and learn, learn, without having to voice um, because you have a voice, but use that voice at the right appropriate times. And, and um, uh, you, you're, you're rookie. Always, always remember where you came. I think that's the biggest part to your question of rookiness. You're being you know, your rookie question. Is that right? Is that what it was? Yeah. Ken? yeah. So, well, I mean, it's, it's tied to your rookie question, but also you right now with your 20 years experience going back in time. Yeah. To talk to that rookie. So, yeah. Yes. So, Man, I, my, my deal is don't forget where you started. Don't forget how you put your boots on your first day because we forget that as a rookie. And, and we forget the the excitement, man. Remember the first time the bells rang and you went on the fire truck? Everybody wanted to throw up. And you're like, gosh, this is the best thing on earth, you know? We get As we grow older and grow older, we get more complacent. We get set in our old ways. We get set in, I don't want to do this or I'm not interested in learning this or or whatever remember you you chose the you chose this career you filled the application out and as a rookie you need to in my opinion i want to be just excited day one that i am as a rookie as day my last day on on the job that's me and and i i why can't we why can't we keep that same enthusiasm that, that same excitement now when you were a rookie back then i don't understand right why can't no, so, Ken, Kendy Sanderson said max points. James Mitchellisco said hell yes, max points. Love it. John Bishop said max points. So there you go. Easy max points. Logan Hinkle said a chief that's connected to their firefighters and remembers where they came from is respected beyond measures. Logan Hinkle said max points with like 14 X's and a timestamp. So there you go. There you so, go. Absolutely. Uh get getting the hype. Yeah. Uh Okay, um, still rolling, still rolling. Right. So many max points, and I'm also keeping track of the giveaway. Uh, what is number three? Question number three. What is your favorite training drill? Oh man, I, I, there's too many, honestly. But I think, I, <laughs> really and truly, uh, my favorite training drill is stretching, stretching lines. And I, I, you can't be, you can't, uh, there's, there's really my opinion. And I, and I, that, that took me a minute to realize that, but, but a train drill, man, that's a, that's a 30 second drill that you can master. And, and that, that's that, that actually starts your song and dance. So that makes sense. When, that, oh, yeah. when you pull that, when you, when that parking brake hits and you're, you're, you're getting rid you're, you're up to, you're up to bat. The way that you stretch that line is going to determine the functionality and the and the direction of how you're going to go. I always have a, I had a captain at Little Rock that told me this, and and I learned it from the I'll, I'll, from the day I die is is know where you're going and how you're going to get there. And by stretching your lines is being prepared to go into the next step, not just mm -hmm. getting to the front door, but going to where you're going to end. Love and it. so I think that's think again master your master your craft. Uh, that, that I, I like using that word is mastering your craft, master your craft, because if you're not stretching right, you're wasting time, right? All right you're, wasting, on. you're wasting valuable time in order to get in order to get back to either putting the fire out or saving somebody, uh, saving somebody or, or, or whatever, just you're, right you're, wasting, you're wasting time. Don't waste my time. Easy, easy, easy. Max points. Number three, what is your favorite training drill? So no, no pressure. Three for three. Here's number four. What mistake have you learned the most from 
Ryan McCormick, in your fire service careers. Oh, I have had so many mistakes. <laughs> I, I can't I can't even begin. Um I, I think I think the mistakes that is uh realizing you're wrong and learning from your own mistakes. I don't know if that makes any sense because some folks are some folks get 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 so strong on you're right. Your answer is always right. Does that make sense? Like, oh yeah. I, oh I, yeah. I, I, I'm right, and nobody's going to be able to change that. Right. And, and and because whether I'm young or I'm eager or I'm better than you are, whatever. My my thing is learn from your mistakes. Be willing to be be willing to own it. Be willing to own that, and and then and then move move past that and realize, hey, I didn't. I wasn't the. I wasn't. Uh, uh, correct. You know, there might be different ways of doing things, but my way probably at that moment wasn't the most accurate or best way. So own your mistake. I think mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing is owning it. Cause I think we forget not, I'm just, again, me, you're talking about me own your mistake, but in the fire service, y'all got to own it. Y'all do don't, don't dwell on it, but own it and then move forward. No, no. And there is, and that's, that's a beautiful point, Ryan. There is a difference between dwelling on it and owning it. Yeah. No, 100. Oh, I love it, man. Great, great answer. Number four, four for four, max points. And it's not me saying this. Oh, it's boy. coming from the audience. Well, thank you. Uh, it's, not just, it's not just because you're my buddy. <laughs> so, so here it is. No, yeah. no pressure at all. Number five, the question. Yeah. It's never changed. Heavy yeah. fire, searchable space. Would you rather be assigned to the nozzle or first in on VES? Oh, uh. Daggone it! I well, I read. I thought about this again. I read your notes and stuff like that, and I don't. Yeah, give me the nozzle. I know I probably just change. I know I just probably uh, uh, change a lot of people's ideas of what I thought I was going to say. Give me the nozzle. I want to go in and put that fire out, and and hope that and pray that the guys outside are doing the correct VS. Or guess what? I'll go put the fire out and then go VS for him. You know what I mean? Just joking. <laughs> just just joking. No, but. But be aggressive. Be I want to be on a. I want an aggressive team. I want an aggressive fire attack crew. Uh, I want to be. I want myself is is. I want to be aggressive in everything that I do on the fire scene. And and you get that's another thing. If you're a lot of people don't like being the aggressive name or the aggressive word. I want to see aggressive folks on the fire scene. I want to see you moving with a purpose and running on the fire scene. Now there's a difference in running and moving with a purpose, right? But I want to see you moving. But uh, I want I want to be on that fire attack and and making that uh, um, and being a, being an aggressive push, being an aggressive nozzleman and 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 getting getting to the seat of the fire faster than than others others are going to be there. Beat them! I don't care if there's two pumps coming up and we're not we're second in. I'm grabbing another nozzle. We're going to go to the door. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I, you, you have to go back and read the comments because <laughs> there was about 30 in there that were like nozzle work is the Lord's work. Aggressive <laughs> is the standard. Yeah. Uh, boom. Knob is the job. Max points. Ryan's a nozzle guy at heart. Yeah. 100%. I, 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 you got to go I, back and read them at some point, I, brother. I do like VS. I've VS a couple times. I made a grab one, one grab since I've VS since I've been a career. And I, I, I like, I do like VS. I do like it. Right Right. I, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. my answer is VES every time on that. And then don't get me wrong. There's no right or wrong answer I that I just want to hear your reasoning behind it. that question, honestly, because they're both. I mean, honestly, I can't say, Hey, I'm sorry. I, I, that's an awesome question. And it's, and it's, um, man, I, I, would I drop the nozzle and do a VES? Yes, I sure would. In a heartbeat. No, that's, and, that's, and, and, and I'm very clear. I'm very yeah. clear on the question. If, yeah. it, if it's, if it's, Victim hanging out a window, or you, if, if it's verified victim, that's not the question. Right. It's just do you want to be on the knob or first in on a VES? Give me the it's nozzle. Not, Give me the nozzle. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So uh, again, I don't want to. I don't want to cloud it up. But there you yeah. go. Five for five. Nice. Five for five at the camera. Five for five. Ryan McCormick max points according to the audience, and that officially makes it. I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. 198 scraps. Wow. In the 198. Wow. That's awesome, dude. I remember when you first started. <laughs> believe me. I we do had too. We conversation, you know, just before you started it. We had a <laughs> conversation a couple years ago. I, yeah. I, 
Man, you that's that's tremendous, dude. You've done awesome. Yeah, uh, it's 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 what you've done and 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 taking a risk and uh and putting yourself out there. I, that's that's pretty. I, that, that's I, I appreciate you doing that for us. I really do. Coming at you. Here's the here's the winners of the last four. Okay, are you, go are with you it. ready? Yeah, winners winners that posted nine one one and said and, and Sam, uh, he did the Google randomizer. Uh, okay. Chris Die, Chris Die, James Mitchell Isco, Kenny Sanderson, and Jared Terry. Those are the four that said they would travel to Little Rock to attend the yeah. conference. All right. All right. So can I give you my number? How do I do that? How do you want to give my number real quick? Yeah, you can, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you can so, do it. So uh, I'll give you my number. Just text me your name and say, you won? If I get more than 10, I'm going to go back and listen to this again. Right. But, uh, so <laughs> so don't, don't be texting me unless you won, please. So 501-920-7254. 501-920-7254. It's September 14th through the 16th, Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, man, we got uh, – man, there's – who? Uh, Corley. Go. Go. Yeah, Corley, you're coming. Um, Andy Starnes, uh, Ty, uh, who, uh, uh, Scott Thompson, um, uh, doggone it, Eric Allen, David uh, uh, David Craig, Devin Craig, David Mellon. Um, who else is the other one? Uh Oh, I just I just had uh, Eric Allen, the, the the Philly guys from uh, uh, Philly Ten. They're coming. Um, uh, I would Fox, help, uh, but I'm afraid I would say somebody that was in the last one and not this one. And I don't want to say people who aren't going to be. I know I'm missing somebody. Hang on, I, I, dog on it. They'll keep help talking. you out. Keep talking. I'll tell you. Keep no, talking. no, you're good, man. 100. percent Because this is the point where I say if people and you already took care of it. But if people want to get a hold of you, how would they do so? And he, he gave you a cell phone number. So, but go. Uh, first, first in, and I got an email at uh, uh, first in dot. Well, I don't know what it is. Doggone it. Sorry. I'll tell you what it is. Ready? It is um, first in, F I R S T dot F D at gmail dot com. Email me. Um, and <laughs> so uh, the other thing is uh, look us up on Facebook. Um, that's the only thing I got going on with the first in conference is um, that's the only way I'm putting it out there in, in, in Facebook land. Uh, so right. shows everything that we have going on. Uh, I mean, I, I, we have a hundred, well now 110 or so folks coming so far. Right. Uh, on. I, I would, uh, my, my max that I've done in the conference is about a 135 folks. Uh, we're going to bur- We're going to blow that away. I, Robert I, Ramirez mayday mindset. Man, oh, Robert. Hello, Robert. My bad brother. Dude, uh, Corey's getting <laughs> me out tonight. So, so Corey, yes, Robert, my man, it's gonna be, and it's gonna be two days of lecture. So here's how it works: two days of passionate lecture. You're hearing from every instructor that's gonna come, and they're gonna talk about an hour and a half, hour to two hours. And then on Friday, as a Thursday and Friday, your uh, Friday afternoon, man, we're gonna have all the instructors basically around a table and uh, and and basically a format area, and just answer questions for the audience. And we've done that a couple of times. Corley's kind of emceed the thing for us. And it's been, that was, man, it's been pretty sweet. That was and the original. That was the yes, original. You were. Yeah. That's, yes, it was. It was, one of the of the, it was off the cuff kind of deal. I came up and said, hey, man, I got an idea. We were at the bar. Weren't we somewhere? Yeah. At the restaurant? And I said, we go, and you asked me, he said, what, what are we doing? I'm like, I don't know. What do you want to do? And so we're like, so you came up with a great idea. So we've just kind of, we just kind of uh, run with it. And then Saturday, eight hours of hands on. So first two days, Thursday, Friday, all lecture. Uh, and Saturdays your hot classes. Um, the other thing I did forget about it is uh, Saturday or Friday night and Thursday night we're gonna do a. Uh, I haven't told you this yet, Corley, but ten o'clock <laughs> seven 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 to ten o'clock we're gonna have a uh, basically um, uh, an off the off the sidebar round with instructors with the, around the bar. I'm I'm uh, I'm renting out a uh, a bartender. And drinks around the about around the back of a fire truck somehow. So drinks, oh yeah, Mitchell, let's go. Absolutely, if there's going to be a vigilante meetup, yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. Oh, yeah, Thursday night, Friday night, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, oh, there we go. The, so there's there's everything you need to know how to get a hold. Uh, first in fire conference, all of that. Uh, let's do housekeeping. Uh, here we go. Uh, go to firehousevigilance.com. The vigilantes go join. If you want to be a part of vigilante meetups at all these conferences, Hey, go join five bucks a month, 60 bucks a year. All the cool kids are doing it. Uh, plus you get access to everything that the vigilantes are doing right now. They're beta testing the V90, which is starting July one. If you haven't 
bit of vigilante, it's too late to join. So maybe you can catch the next one. Uh, also, as soon as this scrap ends, we're going to have the after scrap party, which the vigilantes are all going to sit here. I invite Ryan. He may go to bed. He may not. No, I'm up, he, I'm up. He's invited. So he, he'll be there and we'll discuss and we'll critique his scrap and then ask him questions, you know, privately that, that you can only do that if you're a vigilante. So go firehousevigilance.com. Be a part of it, man. It's amazing. Uh, of course, uh, Episode 200 is coming up soon because this is 198. Two weeks away from Kurt Isaacson and episode 200. It's going to be awesome. Next week, Clark Lamping, out of Vegas, high-rise ops, fire grand decision-making. It's going to be like 2023. I thought 2022 was the most amazing scrap year ever, and 2023 is like taking a shotgun to it. It's like I can't believe how awesome this is. Uh, And then Kurt's back the next year. Okay, Vigilantes. Go to the group in Facebook. I'll post the link as soon as we close out. Uh, give me a few minutes, but the link will appear. We'll log in. We'll talk to Ryan. We'll critique him. We'll tell him how good he did, how bad he did. And yeah, 100%. Um, I appreciate everybody that logs in and checks out the scrap each and every week. I love my guests. My guests are amazing. I know that. The network and 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 uh, talking to friends, talking to people that I would not be able to talk to without it. But the audience... You are truly the ones that bring the questions, bring the topics, and make it magical. So I can never tell you thank you enough for allowing me to share the guest's knowledge with the fire service. And uh, it's just an awesome thing. So thank you for tuning in live. I love you all. Ryan McCormick, thank you, my brother. And thank you, sir, for the opportunity. I really mean that. Lots. Thanks. Hang out for the Vigilante After Scrap Party. I'm going to post the link in, in two short seconds. Everybody else, remember, mutts don't scrap. I hope the tone stays silent unless it is burning. Everybody stay safe out there.